Have you ever wondered, what does it mean to be anointed? What is the anointing? Who is anointed? How do I know if I am anointed by God? Are there different kinds of anointing? What are the different anointing? How do I receive an anointing? Why does God anoint people? What is an individual anointing? What is a corporate anointing? In this video, you will find out what the Bible says about the anointing and the moving of the Spirit and discover for yourself how to be led and used by God in a powerful way. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And 1 John 2 verse 27 says, But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Understanding the anointing. The first thing we have to recognize is that God anoints his people for a purpose. He anointed Jesus and he anoints his children today. Look closely at the scripture found in Acts 10:38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Notice first of all that the scripture doesn't say, how God anointed Jesus, the Son of God, with the Holy Ghost. No. What it says is that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the man. You see, what so many Christians don't understand is that even though Jesus was the only begotten Son of God, he left all of his power and glory in heaven and came to earth in the same form as every other man. Philippians 2.8 says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore in all things it pleased him, Jesus, to be made like unto his brethren. Hebrew 2.17 He was born a man. He lived on earth as a man. As a man he had no more power than you or I. He hungered and thirsted as a man. He suffered as a man. He died as a man. It is extremely important to notice in the Gospels that Jesus never did even one miracle until he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. It was only after the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, descended upon him that he began his ministry. Matthew 3.16 Regardless of what many think, there is no biblical evidence that Jesus ever performed any miracles, nor did he enter into ministry until after he received the Holy Spirit and the power that comes with the infilling anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is also important to note that Jesus also told the disciples not to go anywhere or do anything, not even to witness, until they had received the anointing, baptism of the Holy Ghost. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Luke 24:49 but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts. There are indeed many different kinds of anointing, none of which are without importance. Yet the most important thing for us to realize is that every born again child of God has received the Spirit of God and thereby an anointing of the Spirit. Every born again child of God has received the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. This is not to be confused with the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a completely separate experience. But every born-again believer has received the Spirit of God. As mentioned, there are many different kinds of individual anointing. The five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, Ephesians 4.11. Special anointings in the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, Cox 7, Cox 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Special anointings in the area of help, administration, and so on. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. 1. The fivefold ministry. When God calls someone into the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, he anoints them with supernatural power and ability to carry out the functions of that office. When we understand this, it becomes easy to recognize those who are called and anointed by God for the office they stand in because they seem to have a supernatural endowment to carry out the functions of that office with ease and excellence. 
It also becomes easy to recognize when someone is not called and anointed to an office because they are not able to perform the duties of that office in a manner consistent with the excellence required by the Lord for that office. Everything is a struggle for them, and the enemy seems to constantly be able to overcome them and their goals. It is important to mention here that no one should ever attempt to stand in a ministry office without the call of God and the anointing that comes with the office. Not only is it dangerous for the individual personally to attempt to stand in one of the five-fold ministry offices if they have not been called and anointed to that office, but it can also bring great harm to the body of Christ. Read what happened to Aaron and Miriam when they tried to stand in an office that they were not called to by God. Numbers 12, 1, 10. 2. Special Anointings Every born-again person has the Spirit in them, and thereby is enabled by the Spirit to be used in all of the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, Santorin 11. Whenever the Spirit wills, and to the level that they are willing to be used by Him. However, the Lord does grant special anointings to certain individuals who seem to be able to operate in a higher degree of various gifts. I have seen and known individuals who operate in a higher degree of the gifts of healing than most other people, and still others where the word of knowledge is in manifestation to a greater degree than in others. These special anointings are granted by the Lord for whatever reason He chooses, and they are not something that someone can just simply call upon at their own discretion. It is as the Spirit wills, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Additionally, every born-again person is anointed to some degree to be a help, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, to the body of Christ, and to assist in the many different needs of the ministry as they are needed and called upon by the pastor and other leaders of the church. Yet, I have seen and known individuals who seem to operate in certain areas with a greater anointing than others in the areas of help, administration, etc. Again, this is something that the Lord anoints them to do for a specific reason, and it is not something that we, on our own, can just scoop up at will. In our next video, we shall look at the individual anointing. Thanks for watching. Please kindly let us know if you have any worries or questions in the comment section, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.